Hi, it's day 25 of 40 days um, of tenderness. And um, let's see where to begin. Um, today's April 1st. It's April Fool's Day. And um, it is... Uh, like yesterday, I, I t was talking about this idea of risk and what I'm being asked to risk and realizing that it's about tenderness, of course, about, you know, can I, can I risk trusting? Can I risk letting go of doubt and trusting that all is taken care of? Because um, I'm also looking at um, prosperity, what it means to be abundant and... Um, can I know myself to be one with abundance and love even when on the in the external circumstances it seems like I'm not seeing abundance or I'm feeling lost um, and uh, the card I pulled today was um, Abundancia the Roman goddess of fertility and abundance and she's holding this like cornucopia of golden coins and jewels and it's like you know the universe is pouring its abundance out onto you can you receive it and it's like my dream of that little boy like loving me and it's like knowing oh I could have this this love from this eternal child this pure love every day but but can I allow myself to have it or I'm gonna am I going to be so afraid of of losing it this fear of like, well, I can't have because that automatically comes with loss. That I won't allow myself to, to experience it at all. And, um, and I came across, I wonder if you can hear me with the leaves blowing. Um, I came across this, uh, this card today, which is interesting because uh, I was looking for something else. Or I thought I was, you know how these things happen. And I came across this card. It's the fool, and it says, um, the fool is fearless because he is constantly experiencing his connection with the universe. He is a symbol of Elan Vital, of joie de vivre. Jumping in the unknown with total abandon, he is bound to be iconoclastic. Iconoclastic meaning to, you know, a challenge to to beliefs, a challenge to traditional beliefs, and um, <laughs> and of course, so I just brought a lot of things together. Um, it being April Fool's Day, this idea of the, the uh, let me tell you the story behind this card. So a few years ago, I was in Boulder, and um, I was in a similar quandary, but maybe a different spiral of it, where I was like you know, knowing I was doing the right work, but wondering why it wasn't working. And I, and I passed this uh, tarot card reader on the street. And I don't usually pay for readings because I do readings and I have friends to trade with. But, you know, sometimes you just go with these feelings. And so I sat with her and she just sat and stared at me, didn't pull cards out. And she said, so what's, you know, what's your issue? And I said, oh, I'm not sure about my work. Something's not working. And she goes, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to help people be free, particularly women. And she said, do you feel free? And I said, no. That's why I'm here, you know. And, and then I'm waiting for her to give me a fucking reading, like to pull the cards. And she's just like, she's sitting back in her chair, totally, you know. And it's like, I'm paying her for time. Like, it's, it's by the minute. You know, I think like I paid like $10 for 10 minutes. And I'm just like let's go. I'm not here to like have you observe me. You know, I'm here for you to pull the cards. And she says, uh, you know, I think maybe you should just, uh, do you cook? And I said, yeah. She goes, maybe, do you enjoy it? And I was like, eh, I do. I feel like I have to do it. I feel like I'm like really focused on my work and then I kind of have to cook. So I end up doing it in a rush, but I do enjoy it if I give myself time. And she's like, yeah, you know, maybe you should just focus on that. Just like really enjoying the colors and the art and the beauty of it, you know? And that was it. And she just sat back. And then she pulled out this card, which wasn't part of the deck that she was using. And she said, oh, this is a deck I'm creating. And it's, I took this photo of this guy who, to me, exemplified 
the energy of the fool. And she said, I, this, is, this is what I see in you. And then she read it to me. And then she handed it to me and said, you keep this. And, um, and that was it. That was the reading. So I was, of course, I mean, I loved what the card said. But I was a little bit annoyed. Like, yeah, if I knew how to be this, I wouldn't be asking for advice, you know. But of course, no one can really advise us. They can only remind us. And, uh, and I just noticed on the other side of it, which I always thought, I thought this was really ugly. I'm like, I didn't even like the picture. I'm like, the tarot card thing should be like mystical and magical, not like this like country, I don't know, this, I didn't like the way it looked. But it's, it is like a corticopia, right? It's a basket with food just flowing out. And considering I'm doing a cleanse now, which is focusing on how I'm consistently being fed by, with bounty, and with love by eating the mother's body. This is all perfectly appropriate. Um, and so I'm learning, you know, this whole thing about like, I've been talking about structure and the dance between uh, kind of the natural kind of more wild desire and then the form and the structure that I'm kind of experiencing uh, my edge with, you know, and um, oh, so I was looking at the, the this, that mandala um, drawing that I shared where, uh, not a drawing, the work that I shared, and I was kind of looking at it as like the mandala kind of like flying out the window, like, you know, I, I did this collage, I liked the collage, it was like all these bright colors, it was kind of messy, and then, and then I um, did the, put the mandala on top, was frustrated by it, didn't like having to like draw these little lines, didn't have them, didn't have like tiny little pencils and pens for, to make it look right and annoyed me. And, um, and then I left it alone. And then like the next day I went back to it and I, because I already didn't like it now, I didn't have any expectations. I allowed myself to, to play with it. And I kind of, I put it in different colors and it was acrylic so it dries really fast. So then if I didn't like it, I just tried a different color and kept doing that. And then I took away some lines so that it was less detailed. And in the end, you know, I actually ended up liking it. And it was this other, this other insight of like, it's not about undoing the mandala or the order. It's about setting it free. Like, can we have freedom within form? And, and when I, um, it's like the butterfly and the caterpillar, right? The butterfly is no longer bound. But it's not like the, it, the, the caterpillar has completely disappeared. It's not like we're putting it to death, right? Um, we're just letting it become unbound. And this, um, and this, this thing of like allowing myself to be flexible, like instead of just giving up with the painting, like I usually would do, like, okay, this sucks now, um, to just keep working with it and, and finding myself within it. Like I didn't follow the directions and I didn't stay within the lines necessarily. And I didn't use the materials that would have been easier. I did it my way. And it was playing with the form that I wouldn't necessarily do, but I ended up enjoying it in the end. So, and it offered me this insights, which is really what the art process is for me. It's, I do like it when it's aesthetically pleasing, but it's, it's definitely more about the insights. And really when it's, um, when I do receive insights, it ends up being aesthetically pleasing. Like I'm able to actually see the beauty in it, maybe even if objectively other people couldn't because I, I'm receiving something from it. Um, so 